In this video, we're going to be starting to look at nucleic acids. Now, I'm going to make two parts to this. Uh, so in this first part, we're going to just look at what are the two types of nucleic acids and what they what are their functions. And then we're going to look at the structure of a nucleotide, which is the monomer of a nucleic acid. And then next video will be a little bit more about how the nucleotides actually join up together to form an actual nucleic acid molecule. So first of all, nucleic acids, they are mainly made up of five particular elements. So they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and also phosphorus. Now we've got two types. We've got DNA, which is the one that we're very familiar with most of the time. And DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So deoxyribonucleic acid. So you can see here, D for deoxy, N for nucleic, and A for acid. And the other type that you may have heard of before is RNA. And RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. So again, R stands for ribo, N for nucleic, A for acid. So first of all, is you can already tell from the name is that ribonucleic acid is made up of something about ribo and actually this is specifically about ribose sugar which is one of the components in the uh, in the monomer whereas deoxyribonucleic acid is made up of deoxyribose so we're going to look at their structure later on but basically it doesn't matter if it's dna or rna the key thing that they do is that they're actually the ones that carry our genetic information so DNA forms the genes and also forms the chromosomes that are contained inside the nucleus. And RNA are actually key to protein synthesis, which is something you'll learn later on in this chapter. And the key idea is in, in both of them is that by carrying that genetic information, you can pass it on, obviously, if you're making new cells or um, making an offspring. But the key thing is the genetic information codes for uh, instructions on how to make proteins. So now let's have a look at the actual structure of the monomer of a nucleic acid. So the, uh, the, the simplest group of a nucleic acid. So let's look at the structure of a nucleotide, which is the monomer, the, the simplest thing that makes up any nucleic acid. So uh, it's mainly made up of three parts here, as you can see, and we can have two types of nucleotides. Uh, one is the RNA nucleotide and the, DNA, and the other one is the DNA nucleotide. So uh, first of all, let's look at the first component, which is the one in the middle. So you can see here, it's the green bit here with the oxygen at the top. And we've got carbon one, two, three, four, and five. So again, similar to the glucose molecules, there's a, any corners, right? Any kinks is actually showing a carbon. So this is the pentose sugar. And pentose because it's made up of five carbons. So like think about a pentagon, it's five angles. So pencil sugar, and we can have namely two types. We can have the deoxyribose, which goes on to make the DNA molecule, or we can have ribose, which makes RNA molecules. So as the name implies, deoxyribose means, D means without, and oxy means oxygen. So deoxyribose, basically in carbon two, um, they would have a hydrogen attached to carbon-2 in the deoxyribose, whereas in a ribose, there will be a hydroxyl group attached to carbon-2. So they've got an extra oxygen, basically, in ribose. You, do, you won't be actually asked to recall the structure of uh, a pencil sugar, but it will be useful to be aware of what it means by deoxyribose and what's the difference between those two sugars. So on the left here, you can see this one here. That is a phosphate group. You will come across uh, phosphate groups in loads of different concepts in biology. But basically, this one here is just a simple phosphate group that is attached to carbon number five. And it's worth noting that it is negatively charged. Um, and that will become really important when it comes to understanding the structure of chromosomes when you learn about them in um, chapter six about cell division. For those of you interested, uh, phosphate group has a formula of PO4 3 minus. So that's the phosphate group there. Then finally, on the right hand side here that is attached to carbon one, that one is actually showing a nitrogenous base. 
So as the name implies, uh, a nitrogen space contains nitrogen. And even though here I've just drawn a rectangle, in reality, they are actually um, made up of more complex structure. There's like carbon rings to it. You will not need to know the structure of any of the nitrogen spaces, but you do need to be aware of some structural traits that they've got. So one type of nitrogen space is called purines, and uh, purines contain two carbon rings uh, as part of their structures. The other type is called pyrimidines, which has one carbon ring in it. The way that I remember it is by thinking about the opposite. So the longer the name uh, of the base, then the smaller structure. So pyrimidines is a longer word, so it's got a smaller one ring one carbon ring structure, but purines is a shorter word and it's got a bigger structure, so it's two carbon rings. Doesn't matter how you remember it, that's just how I remember it, but they come up with a way to help yourself to remember this better. There are different types of purines and pyrimidines, and specifically there are two to three. And the combinations that we get, uh, the types of bases we get in DNA and RNA can also be slightly different. So the nitrogenous base in DNA uh, is the classic AGCT that we you might have come across before. So we've got adenine and guanine, which are both purines, and also cytosine and thymine, which are both pyrimidines. Whereas in RNA, it's quite similar as well. RNA also contains adenine and guanine as their base. Uh, they will also have cytosine, but RNA molecules do not have thymine, they have uracil instead of thymine. So uracil replaces thymine as a base in RNA. So we've got two purines, adenine and guanine, and we've got three types of pyrimidines, cytosine, thymine and uracil. And depending on if the nucleotide is DNA or RNA, then they can have AGCT or AGCU. So just to quickly summarize, uh, nucleic acids are a group of biological molecules that carries our genetic information uh, that and basically codes the instructions on how to make proteins. Uh, they're made up of five particular elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And we can have two types of nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. And both nucleic acids are actually made up of nucleotides, which is the monomer for the nucleic acids. And each nucleotide is made up of three particular components. We've got the pentose sugar, the phosphate group, and the nitrogenous base. In an exam question, if they ask you uh, to describe the components or state the components found in a DNA nucleotide, then notice if the question is specifically saying DNA nucleotide, you must say that it carries a deoxyribose sugar. If you just simply say it's got a pentose sugar, you won't get the marks for that because pentose could also be a ribose sugar. So remember when you're looking at the question, make sure you specifically see, is it asking about a DNA nucleotide or an RNA nucleotide? And then make sure you include the correct pentose sugar. And with regards to the nitrogenous base, uh, they could be different depending on if it's DNA and RNA, but largely the, the five different types of bases can be classified as purines if they've got two carbon rings in it, or pyrimidines if they've only got one carbon ring. So examples of purines would be adenine and guanine, examples of pyrimidines would be cytosine, thymine, and uracil. So here we, sum we looked at the structure of nucleotide, then in the next video we're going to look at how each nucleotide actually joined together to make one single strand of nuclear acid and also how in DNA when we've got two strands of them how do they actually join up together.